up, Yang Yang? We just left the New Hampshire Democratic Convention, and first of all, I gotta say, Andrew Yang crushed it as usual. You're about to see that footage right here, and we're gonna try to give you a, kind of like two perspectives. We're gonna give you the perspective of the cameras that were actually on Andrew Yang for the Democratic Convention, and then we're also gonna give you shots of some of the footage that we took. But I gotta say, they jobbed our boy again. They did it again. DNC, y'all better tighten your, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. <laughs> y'all got my blood boiling today. And there were 19 people, 19 people speaking at that convention. And Andrew Yang, guess, I'm gonna let y'all guess. Guess where he went? <laughs> Guess where they put Andrew Yang? Not in alphabetical order, mind you. No. This was not in alphabetical order. <laughs> this is why y'all don't get more Republicans over on your side. Because y'all pull this crazy shit like this. DNC, y'all got to tighten up. Yang Yang, sorry. I'm telling you. They got me mad. They got me mad. So we got all kinds of footage coming later. Shit we like have that. us like running around the town of Manchester. Yeah. You see our, our newest cameraman back there? Oh yeah. That's Nick. Nicholas. Yeah. The newest Yang Gang member too. Yep. Uh -huh. Yeah. He can vote in 2024. That's right. Future of the Yang Gang. Hey, we gotta get him reelected, right? We love you, Yang Gang. Our donation links are in the description. PayPal, all that stuff. We love you. See you whenever. Whenever we see you. As soon as I kick the DNC's ass. ago when I was honest I said I have not been back in a long time because I did not enjoy my time here <laughs> and at that the student body erupted in applause and I was like oh my gosh I guess something's never changed <laughs> after I graduated from Exeter I went to Brown University not that far from here I became an unhappy corporate attorney and then an entrepreneur that had a mini rise and maximum fall but I stuck with it I did well in business and then when I saw the country was heading in the wrong direction, I started a nonprofit that helped create thousands of jobs around the country in places like Detroit, Cleveland, St. Louis, Baltimore, New Orleans, and Birmingham. Thank you. And it was during those seven years that I got a firsthand look at why Donald Trump is our president today. It's the biggest question that Democrats need to answer in 2020. If you turned on cable news, you might think that he's our president today because of some mixture of Russia, racism, Facebook, the FBI, Hillary Clinton, emails, all sort of mixed together into, a, into some kind of brew. But I'm a numbers guy, and the numbers tell a very clear and distinct story that the reason why Donald Trump is our president today is that we automated away 4 million manufacturing jobs in Ohio, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Iowa, all the swing states that Donald Trump needed to win. How many of you have noticed stores closing where you live here in New Hampshire? And why are those, look around you, that's crazy. But it's normal. It's unfortunately no longer crazy. Why are those stores closing here in New Hampshire? One word answer. That's right, Amazon is soaking up $20 billion in business every single year. And how much is Amazon paying in taxes in return? 20 billion out. 
zero back. That is the math. They are paying less in taxes than everyone here in this arena. I can say that with absolute confidence. When you all call the customer service line of a big company and you get the software, the bot, what do you do? Zero, 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 human, human, representative, until you get a human on the line. I do the exact same thing. But in two or three years, the software is going to sound like this. Hey, Andrew, how's it going? What can I do for you? It's going to be delightful, fast, efficient. You might not even realize it's software. What is that going to mean for the two and a half million Americans who answer phones for a living right now? As 30% of your stores close, the most common job here in New Hampshire is retail clerk. The average retail clerk is a 39-year-old woman making between $9 and $10 an hour. What is she going to do? We're in the midst of the greatest economic transformation in the history of our country, what experts are calling the fourth industrial revolution. When is the last time you've heard a politician say the words fourth industrial revolution, New Hampshire? Just now. And I am barely a politician. So these are the real changes that have driven Donald Trump into the White House. We decimated millions of manufacturing jobs in the swing states, and now we're doing the same thing to retail, call centers, truck driving. It's going to be a buzzsaw through the economy. And unfortunately, the people in D.C. want nothing to do with it. Trust me, I went there first. My first move was not to run for president. I'm married, I have kids. <laughs> so the question is, what are we going to do about it? What is the answer that Democrats are going to present to the American people? What is the economic vision? If you've heard anything about me, you heard something like this. There's an Asian man running for president who wants to give everyone $1,000 a month. Remember that? And the first time you heard that, it sounded like a gimmick. But then you dig into our country's history and you find it's a deeply American idea. Thomas Paine was for it at our founding. Martin Luther King championed it in the 60s and it was what he was fighting for in 1968 when he was assassinated. It was so mainstream, it passed the U.S. House of Representatives in 1971, and one state has had a dividend just like this in place for almost 40 years. And what state is that, New Hampshire? And how do they pay for it? And what is the oil of the 21st century? Technology, that's right. Data, software. A study just came out that said that your data, our data, is now worth more than oil. How many of you remember getting your data check in the mail? No. In Alaska, they call this the oil check and they love it. We're going to call this the tech check and all of America is going to love it. <laughs> this is the trickle up economy from our people, our families and our communities up. It would make our people stronger, healthier, mentally healthier. And the money would go right back into our communities. You know where it would go. Think about it for just a moment. Where would it go? Daycare, car repairs you've been putting off, Little League signups. It would create thousands of jobs right here in New Hampshire. This is the trickle-up economy, and this is the vision we have to present to the rest of the country as quickly as possible. I am candidate number 19 up on this stage today. <laughs> take your responsibility very, very seriously and that you can shape the future of this country. It is why you're here with me, candidate number 19. You're a little bit spoiled. You think to yourself things like, I don't know about that Yang fellow, I just met him the one time. But it's up to you to take the country in the right direction as quickly as possible to show them that we can build a trickle-up economy and that we can solve the problems that got Donald Trump into the Oval Office in 2016. Yeah. In 2016, he said, we're going to make America great again. And what did Hillary Clinton say in response? America is already great. And that did not work out. <laughs> he got the problems essentially right, but his solutions were the opposite of what we need. His solutions were, we're going to build a wall, we're going to turn the clock backwards, we're going to bring the old jobs back. We have to turn the clock forward. We have to accelerate our economy and society as quickly as possible. We have to evolve in the way we think about work and value. And I am the ideal candidate for that job because the opposite of Donald Trump is an Asian man who likes math. Thank you, New Hampshire.
Yummy, 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 yummy.